the fastest way that I went from 30% body fat to 10% body fat. And in this video, I'm going to show you each and every single step that led to me becoming a men's physique natural pro. On this side, you're seeing me at 200 pounds at my starting point. And on the left side, you're seeing me at 163 pounds and becoming a men's physique natural pro. What's interesting here, it's not the first time I've been able to achieve such a transformation in that amount of time. But I've also been able to repeat these same results with my clients at Scott by Science. Being able to do it with incredible women like Shannon, Hallie, and the list is endless and the same with my guys and I'm showing you all my clients have been able to achieve this in as little as 16 weeks and as much as 20 weeks. So in this video I'm going to give you the step-by-step -step play, each and every single detail that I followed so that you can just copy me and see the exact same results for yourself. Let's not waste any time and let's dive straight in. So me being a 30% body fat, I'd finally come to a decision that enough was enough and the amount of pain and the way I was feeling and just my mindset was a turning point where I decided I'm going to make this commitment. I'm going to tell the world that I'm going after a transformation like this. And this is where I always decide in step one of the plan where I decide the route. How am I going to get there? When am I going to get there? And what is the plan that I want to follow? So at the very beginning, you need to take down your metrics at the time. I was 30 years old when I started the transformation and my weight was exactly 200 pounds. It maybe fluctuated at 201, 202. The highest I ever saw was 203, but the average number was 200 pounds and roughly 30% body fat just going according to eye test. I'm 173 centimeters in height. That is about 5'8", if I'm not mistaken. And I needed to decide, fantastic, what is the ultimate goal? And I knew that I needed to get to 10%. With that being said, you know where we're starting and I knew where I was starting and I said, okay, Mike, let's decide what my weight should be at 10% so I have a clear North Star. And this is extremely important for anybody who wants to see a transformation. You need to decide what your North Star is, what goal are you going for? And other people have this in sports where they're going for a championship, they're trying to win the Super Bowl or they wanna win the Champions League in soccer. It is important to have a North Star in place. For me, the North Star I created was the goal weight that I wanted to hit and becoming a men's physique pro. And this is what will keep you going even when you don't want to. The days that become tough and when you need to make a decision between, hey, I'm being tempted by something, this will set your mindset on something and you'll go for it. So this is very important. Don't undercut this particular step. Don't skip this step. So for me, I decided, okay, I'm at 30% body fat. I want Want to be a men's physique pro and I need to be at 10% at minimum. Now we need to determine what will my weight be at 10%. So the easiest way to do that is saying, okay, if you're 200 pounds at 30% body fat, it means that 1% of your current weight is two pounds, right? And let's say you're 183 pounds, for example, 1% of your weight is 1.83. So the arithmetic is very easy. Now I need to determine, okay, what will my weight be at 10%? And again, very easy to do. To go from 30% to 10%, I need to lose 20%. So 20% multiplied by 1% of my weight, which will be two pounds multiplied by 20. So I needed to lose 40 pounds. So my weight at 10% is going to be 160 pounds, right? 200 minus 40. And this math will apply to you. And it actually worked out because the lowest weight that I hit was roughly 163.5 pounds. And just because I had that number in mind, I had a clear understanding of how low I needed to go to get there. Now, when I say the fastest way in my book, a fast weight loss, and again, I'm showing you all my clients here, they're the ones who've seen fast weight loss and amazing results at the same time. And I don't mean getting fast results where you look scrawny and you're looking skinny fat. I mean fast results where you look amazing amazing and the important part is sustainable. Yes, I can lose more than two pounds per week if I so desire, but I want this to be sustainable. So again, I now knew that I had to get to 160 pounds. The second question is, Dr. Mike, how long is this gonna take? And I had to realize, okay, let me plan out how long this is gonna take so that when I do my show, I'm going to reach the destination that I need on time. And there's two ways we can do this. The first way is by using percentages, right? Now, again, you can use the eye test and I'm showing you a chart here of some photos and you can pick which physique looks closest to yours. And again, this doesn't have to be rocket science. This is just so you come up with a general idea, a map of where you are and where you want to be. So the easiest way to think about it is a decently paced transformation. You want to lose about half a percent of your body weight per week. 
and a fast transformation is 1% and a very fast transformation is 1% and above. Like my client Harry here, so 1% and above and under certain circumstances with certain clients, I do this, but it's a very, very small group. So let's say you want to lose 1%, right? Because this video is the fastest way. 1% of my body weight is two pounds. So if I want to lose 1% per week, it means for me to lose 20%, it's going to make take me 20 weeks. So if you're at 40% and you want to get to 15, you just have to make the calculation. It is going to take you 25 weeks. So that's one way to look at it. Going from 30% to 10%, it took me 20 weeks, which was about five months. And the number is on the dot. And with this in mind, I now have a map and an idea of where I want to be and what goal I want to hit. And again, this is the way you need to think to be able to hit your goal. So this is the section that I call the root. The next part we're going to go into is inputs. What inputs do we need to do now? We should remember this, guys, and I want you to remember this for eternity. To be able to lose your belly fat and to be able to go from 30% body fat to 10% body fat, it is always going to be your nutrition. It is the king. And the easiest way and the simplest way I can explain it to you, and it's a way I've not explained it on my channel before, is now how are we going to calculate what should you be eating and what method should you be going? Number one, what I don't want you to do is to be very drastic with your calories cut because you need to take a good logical step to get to your goal because if not, your body's going to fight against you. So you wanna be smart about the way you go about it. So for example, I now knew, okay, Mike, you're at 200 pounds. What calories, what, how much food, how much energy should I put into my body to be able to lose this weight in 20 weeks? And this is the simplest way you can do it. Now take your body weight and I'm going to give you a chart here. The numbers I'm going to share with you will range from 14 to 17. Now, remember this number. If you're going to train three times a week, you will use the number 14. If you're going to train four times a week, you're gonna use the number 15. If you're gonna train five times a week, you're going to use the number 16. And if you're gonna train six times a week, you're going to use the number 17. Now, with that being said, I made a decision. I'm going to train five times a week. So all I did is I took my weight, 200 pounds, and then I multiplied that by 16 because I was going to train five times a week. And you guys can just do this, pause the video for a second, and just calculate how many times you're going to train according to the chart between 14 and 17, and which numbers associated with you, and multiply that by your 30% or whatever your starting weight is. And the result I got was 3,200 calories. Now, this is the easiest way to go about it, and the math checks out because, again, when I did my calculation, I did it a very complicated route. I even utilized AI when I was calculating it. I do the same with my clients figuring out everything that they do but the simplest way is really just take your weight and multiply it according to this chart and the number you're gonna get and the number I got 3200 was my basal metabolic rate and what also worked out really well is before I decided that I was going to cut down I actually said hey Mike let me track all the foods you were eating right just curious of how much I was eating that got me to 30% and it was roughly 3,200 calories and it's amazing how the math can check out with your overall behavior. So 3,200 calories was my maintenance and I tried to eat more than 3,200 every day. I couldn't do it. It was just so much food. So sometimes I would get to 3,500 but on average it was 3,200. Now that is your maintenance weight. If I eat that food every day, it's going to maintain my weight. And simply I knew, okay, Mike, for the first week, right, just to see how my body responds, I'm going to create a 500 daily caloric deficit. And we know from math that one pound of fat is 3,500 calories, right? So 500 multiplied by seven will give you 3,500. So I'm predicting to lose a pound of fat. Now, let's say you decide, hey, I want to lose two pounds this week. Then you need to establish a 1,000 caloric deficit. Again, this comes with an increase in risk, but I knew that, okay, I will accelerate it as I go. So I want to be smart about this. I'm going to start slow and then I'm going to ramp it up and I'm going to give my body the opportunity to do the work. So my caloric deficit number became 2,700. So 3,200 minus 500. The next questions you'll ask, okay, what, what is my protein? What is my carbs? What is my fats? How much of this I'm eating? And again, this was just the setup, right? After, and again, it's going to be very easy for you to follow. So if we can't watch to the very end, it's very likely you don't want to lose weight. For you guys who are watching, fantastic. So I knew, I now knew I'm at 2,700 calories. I needed to figure out first, what's my protein? Very easy. Just give yourself one gram of protein per pound of body weight. Don't overcomplicate it. It doesn't matter if you're at 1.1 grams or if you decide 
6.9 in my books, I knew the more protein I eat, the more muscle I'll be able to build or keep. I'll feel fuller, and I've seen this, the more protein I've ever given my clients, the easier the journey is for them. And then the third thing is that protein will boost your metabolism. And I noticed this, that I was feeling so much better eating more protein. So 200 grams of protein is what I decided I'd eat. The next thing you wanna figure out is, okay, how many fats? And the very easy way to do it is you take your calories, 2,700, and just figure out 20% of those calories should go to fats. So 2,700, multiplied by 20% gives you around 540 calories. To figure how many grams of fat that is, you divide it by nine, because one gram of fat is equal to nine calories. So 540 divided by nine comes out to 260 grams of fat. And voila, I knew, okay, 200 protein, 60 fat. And you guys can see it's so easy to calculate this. Now we need to figure out carbs. And all you do is figure out for X. You're just figuring out, okay, how many calories do I have left? So it's 2,700. And I knew that I was eating 200 grams of protein. And we know one gram of protein is equal to four calories, which in total is 800 calories. So now it was 2,700, right? My total calories minus the calories coming from my protein, which is minus 800 minus the calories that I already allocated to fats, which was 540. And that gave me 1,360 calories. So those were all the calories going towards carbs. And then to figure out how many grams of carbs that is, I divided by four, which came out to be 340 calories. And this is where most of you make the mistake. You guys just go, that's way too many carbs, but we are smart here. This is a science channel. So I'm gonna give you guys the smartest way to go about this entire process. So do not worry. Whatever number you got, just stick to it. And those were the calories I knew I was gonna stick to and I was gonna do it no matter what. And I do this with all my clients and I'll tell you what the benefits are. So the first benefit is that the protein is gonna keep me very full. The second benefit is, although to many relatively, that's a lot of grams of carbs, I knew I'm probably gonna feel more energetic. I'm probably gonna be training so much harder. I'm gonna walk so many more steps and I also knew that, okay, if I don't see my weight coming down, I can always, the next week, decrease my carbs a little bit, slowly but surely, until the weight does start coming off. This way, you're not being irrational and just cutting calories because emotionally, you feel like it's too much. And those were the calories that I ran in a week. Now, to talk about the diet and then how I adjusted the diet, I remember what my, my, my diet was at 2,700 calories. So for the morning, I was eating protein oats. Right? And with that protein oats, it was just mainly carbs from the oats and protein from the scoops that I was adding in there. The second meal that I was eating was French toast and I was adding a lot of strawberries and blueberries to that. So I was also getting my serving of fruits in there. So it was the oats for breakfast. It was the French toast for lunch. Sometimes I would switch that French toast and make a chicken burger. So the carb source was always going to be the bread. And with the French toast, I used egg whites and whey protein as the protein source. And then finally for dinner, all I decided to have was a rice bowl with a lot of veggies in it. Bell peppers, red peppers. I was using iceberg lettuce, tomatoes. I was adding avocado and that rice bowl, I wanted to make it as colorful as possible. So I had a serving of vegetables. So I was satisfying all the basic markers. And I loved this diet because as each week passed, all I need to do was adjust my calories slightly and I'll tell you exactly how to do that. Now, before all of you guys say, oh my God, that is so difficult. Remember, this is this can happen in one sitting in one day. So once I finally decided to figure out what my calories were and what I was eating specifically, I just recorded the foods on my fitness pal one day. And this will make it so easy for you without breaking your brain and racking your brain of what to do every day. I tracked my calories on my fitness pal. I made sure that I hit the 200 protein, the 60 grams of fat and the 340 grams of carbs. And what was amazing is that I ate that same food every day. So I didn't have to track anymore. And I knew because I tracked it the day before, eat the exact same foods in the exact same portions. And I could meal prep the rice bowl. I could meal prep the chicken breast that would become my burger. And I could also quickly, it would take me five minutes to make the oats. And why I love this diet is that I could eat it the whole week. And this way for you, you guys if you guys want to be able to quickly go from 30 percent to 10 percent you won't stress yourself with trying to figure out a new diet every day and what was also good digestively 
is that my body got very used to digesting that food and my energy felt very good relatively. I have some clients who don't do really well with oats in the morning and sometimes I'll make change. Now, speaking of that, you guys also know I practice intermittent fasting and this is a really strong point. Intermittent fasting is a tool to manage your hunger and obviously it has so many more benefits that are powerful for the body. But when I was at 2700 calories, I started at a 12 hour fast and I was eating within a 12 hour window period. So basically I would eat my breakfast at 8 a.m. I would have my lunch at midday. I would have a snack at about 3 p.m. And then by 8 p.m. was going to be when my dinner was. So I'd have about four meals. Now, again, as my calories decreased, what I did right to manage my hunger is I increased my fasting window. So instead of going 12, 12, I would go 14, 10. And as I continued getting into a deeper deficit, I went from 14, 10 to the classic 16, 8. And leading right up to show, let's call this about four weeks to five weeks out, even six weeks out, I was going as low as 20 hours of fasting and eating in a four hour window period. And that makes logical sense, right? Just keep on decreasing your fasting window smaller and smaller as your calories become smaller and smaller. And now, you guys are saying, okay, Mike, I understand what to do in week one. What do I do moving forward? After that, take seven days and weigh yourself. And I would see, okay, I wouldn't get emotional about my weigh-ins. I just did it at the same time and I just figured out it's a number. A lot of people get very emotional, which I understand it will make you feel a certain way, but it's really good for you because it will correct your behavior. So I used an app called Happy Skill and I tracked it for seven days. And if I saw that my weight was going down by a pound, I was happy. And let's say it doesn't. Worst case scenario, you see no change. The good news is, is that you're eating quite a lot of carbs. So at a minimum, I would only reduce my calories by 100 calories. At a maximum, I would reduce my calories by 200. And predominantly, it will come from carbs. So let's say week one passed and I didn't see seven days passed. I didn't see any results. I would give it three more days. And at three more days, I would decide if my weight shifted. Maybe it shifted a little bit. If it's less than a pound, I knew, okay, I need to make an aggressive change. Anything less than a pound, I made an aggressive change, which was to me 200 calories. And 200 calories in carbs, we say 200 divided by four is 50 grams of carbs. So I went from 340 all the way to 290 in the following week. And I would then check again for the next week and I'd track all my weights and seven days would pass. And I saw, okay, I'm losing 1.4 pounds now. And I left it that way because I said, okay, let me continue. And again, we're just touching on inputs. And the easy thing is because all I had to do was remove 50 grams of carbs. It was an easy thing to do. I could say, okay, cool. I'm just going to remove an equivalent of rice. And I know this stuff because I was doing it every day. A hundred calories from rice, which is just carbs, is about 30 grams of uncooked rice. But I wanted to reduce... 200 calories so i just had to reduce 60 grams of uncooked rice from my dad which i didn't even notice and that's how you should go about it is you're just playing this game and you're just making the puzzle fit and as the weeks passed i was always playing around with okay i'm gonna remove it from oats this time and it will be just slightly maybe i would reduce a little bit from oats and rice and then as time passed i said okay i'm not gonna have four chicken burgers i'm gonna have three and i'll just eat the chicken itself and i'll have three burgers instead and you see that is smart i was just reducing portion and not complicating my entire process by eating the same foods. Yes, if you get bored, switch the diet around. Maybe you can change it every two weeks, but just use the same logic and just make sure that you're hitting those numbers. So that is everything in terms of input. And if you just want to make sure you're not hitting any plateaus, you're happy with your results, but you want to make sure that you keep the train going, then you can do 100 calories. Again, this is where coaching comes in and having an experienced coach can be really, really useful in this case, and you don't have to stress about it. But that's that's what I did with the diet and I kept it relatively the same and you guys can see this on the channel. Now, the smartest thing that I'd also do is that as, as I was also decreasing my fasting window, what I would also notice is that some foods didn't serve me, especially when I started getting sub 2000 calories. The oats was gone, the rice was gone, and I would make sure that I'm getting whole foods and my favorite foods that you guys would always see me share is cauliflower rice, zucchini noodles, pumpkin. I was skipping breakfast so there was no need for oats. But what I would do, the smaller my calories got, the more volume I would add to my foods, right, in general. So just utilizing this logic will make this process so much easier for you. And if you're hungry as you're going through this process, it really means that you need to find foods that are going to satisfy you. And for all of you guys, um, an easy way is just to go to your grocery store 
and look at what are good alternatives, right? What is gonna be calorie friendly from the foods you like? And sometimes spending an hour and just having a look at what options you have in your grocery store can make you more successful because you'll find calorie friendly versions. And this is why an experienced coach is really good because he's gone through this. He's done this with so many people. He knows all the answers, all the tips and tricks so that you can get to your result quicker. So that is everything with inputs. But before we continue, if you feel that this advice is what people need to finally hear, so that they can see a similar transformation. Share this with a friend, just send it to them, let them watch it so they can also see the same success. And what I've seen is that when you do things in a tribe, you get results better. So send this to a friend and say, hey, let's do this together. So just share the video with them. And if you want more people to see it, leave the video the gentle thumbs up. Yeah, let's leave it at that, let's move on. But I'm also now going to go into part three, which is the outputs. And that's what process is, is input versus output. Input is always gonna be your diet. Output is gonna always be your extra exercising. Now, what's really important is, and people don't take enough point to this, is how many calories are you burning? And also, how does your physique look like? So why it's important to have a lot of carbs in your diet or have enough carbs, let me say, is that you also want to look strong and commanding. And the only way you look strong is by training hard and training heavy. So whenever I was eating the carbs, I wasn't emotionally attached to the number. I just make sure that I was busting my ass in the gym. So I would train really, really hard to be able to build more muscle mass. Because remember, if I increase how much muscle I have, my body fat percentage decreases consequently. So that's a big mistake people make is they only think about the fat loss, but you want to think about the muscle as well. Because what happens is for a lot of people is that they lose a lot of fat, but then they lose a lot of muscle. So what happens is, is that, and let's picture this is your muscle and this is your fat. The fat comes down, but so does the muscle. And eventually you get to this point where you're looking skinny fat because you don't have any of the muscle punching through. But when you have muscle tissue, it punches through, right? So you want to be able to train hard. I was training five times a week. An easy format is to just go upper body, lower body, push, pull legs. That's my favorite routine to go through. And I was training with good form, right? So I, I was making sure that I was being efficient in the gym and I was training hard. What I'd also do is I had a notepad and I was writing down all my weights. So I was making sure that A, I was getting stronger with every bicep curl, with every bench press. And again, as you continue going, you won't make drastic jumps as your body adapts, but I was making sure at the bare minimum, my weight wasn't going down. So as my fat was coming down, I was at least maintaining my muscle mass. So that made me even look leaner because I had so much muscle tissue pushing through. And that's something that not enough people pay attention to. Train, get into the habit, get into the habit of really putting in effort and doing it with good form and then making sure you're tracking your weights, right? And getting stronger. This is one of the ways that it was able to look like a fast transformation because I wasn't only just working on the fat loss, I was also thinking about the muscle building. And obviously my protein intake was definitely helping me with that. And there'll be a few other things. So that was the first thing that helped me with the look overall. But the second thing that made a drastic difference is I like eating and I have an appetite. And when I speak to clients of mine, especially the women, we need to understand where our metabolism is at and how our body responds, right? Because sometimes if you're too aggressive, your body can become resistant. And this is why so many women and men deal with metabolic damages because you're too aggressive with how much energy you're putting into your body. You start shutting down your hormonal processes and then you're stuck and you don't know what did I not fix. And with that being said, if you feel that is you, you're a busy woman, you've been trying so hard to lose this fat, you're, you think your metabolism is shot, maybe your energy isn't the best, you've tried personal trainers, you've tried different diets and it hasn't worked for you and you want to be able to finally get rid of this fat tissue on your weight, maybe you just had a newborn. If you finally want to have a gap guaranteed way to lose all of your weight, for you to be more energetic, for you to have your metabolism recovered, for you to feel amazing if you're a mom or a busy CEO like my client Shannon, I highly recommend you fill out the application to work with me. I have spots for five busy women to be able to work in the women division with myself and one of my doctors on my team, Dr. Zeno, because we're creating an amazing women's division. Fill out the application in the description below. We will chat to you and talk about the format we utilize to see success, which is called the DNA sequence. And 
And if we're a perfect fit, we'll tell you exactly what to do, what processes we need to follow that's specific for you so that you can lose the weight sustainably and be energetic the rest of your life. And so that you can finally have your dream physique back. I've seen women say that, hey, I look as good as I did when I was back in college, which is a dream. Like to me, it's the best time machine. With that being said, the second thing I did in terms of outputs, I talked about training. The second thing I did was walking. Man, if I die, and let me not even go down that route. I want to be remembered as the guy that just told you to walk. It is so healthy for you mentally and physically. Go on a walk with your wife. Go on a walk with your husband. Go on a walk with your kids. Why I love walking so much, not only is it great cardiovascularly and for your mental, it's amazing for fat loss. In terms of cardio, it burns the most amount of fat. So walk. And in my case, because I love eating, what I would do is I would ramp up the walking. So I, will, I started at 10,000 steps. The next week I went to 11,000. I tried to get to 15,000 as quickly as possible. So instead of being aggressive with changing your calories and damaging your metabolism, I just made sure I was moving more. And I got as high as 20,000 steps even in my first four weeks. And that's why I was able to melt my fat away so quickly. Because walking is such a low intensity exercise, it's easier for your body to just tap into those fat stores as a source of energy. And it also gives you this amazing look because you're not damaging your muscle tissue. You're not hurting yourself in terms of recovery because when you do high intensity interval training your training program sucks the next day because your body's still so tired but because you can walk people can walk a lot without really damaging any other or breaking any other systems and something we do in our community is called a step challenge so i challenge my clients right and i give them prizes a lot of money prizes with whoever gets the most amount of steps and the beautiful thing is most people lose so much weight in that month but not only that they figure out new and sexy ways to be able to walk a lot. So something we do is that, okay, if you're sitting at your desk, the last five minutes, I want you to get up and walk, right? You do that for every last five minutes for 12 hours, that's 6,000 steps. So people found interesting ways to gamify it. And there's literally almost no downside. Now, yes, if you're at 40% and you're just getting into shape, don't just jump to 20, 30, 40,000 steps. Slowly, gradually build it up. But if you're feeling confident, you're feeling better, I quickly went to 15,000 and this was was like an accelerator it was like the turbo to my weight loss and that's why it's so easy for us so that's the one thing one of the biggest things I did in terms of output and that's step number three now step number four is what I call risk management the biggest risks in losing weight is the social activity and also your hormonal profile so we know if you cut your calories too quickly, you start getting very weak, you start getting very hungry, you're dealing with brain fog. So risk management is I would never cut my calories more than 200 calories and I would never do it back to back because you'll zap your energy too quickly. I always was very, very smart about it. The second thing that I found out is that the more I slept, the easier it was. This is what happens when I don't sleep. When I didn't sleep, I would find my, I'd wake up very, very hungry. Like immediately I'm like, I need to go eat breakfast. I'm so hungry. I'm starving. And I can't reply to my clients. What I was craving for was also the cookies. And I found that my cravings were so high. And even though I would eat, let's say I just gave in, I would still find myself so much hungrier. And again, research has explained why this happens. Like on a simple level, when you sleep less, you have less serotonin, the happy hormone. No one ever says I slept four hours and I feel happy. Well, maybe a small crazy few. You have such a low serotonin level, your body finds interesting ways to seek a serotonin increase, this happy hormone, and you end up going to go eat the lasagna, the pizzas, the burgers on these particular days, or it's a weekend, right? And that's why so many people gain weight over the weekends is because they're sleeping so little through work and then they're trying to catch up, but they end up going to party on the Friday night and they just overindulge. So number one, to, ri to manage my risk, I would just sleep so much more. I made sure it has to be seven hours or more. And this is one of the things that I do with all my clients. That's a lower hanging fruit. So I make sure we get to seven, eight hours and I have different methods that I see success with them, interesting ways that I can make sure that they're sleeping eight hours in good quality. My training performance would plummet. I would see on my notepad, like, damn, I'm doing like 30% less weight than I normally could when I'm sleeping less. So risk management was that I would avoid the cravings and I'd make sure that I was still building muscle and that I was burning more calories by making sure I slept seven hours. Not only that, there's so many more things that sleeping more does for you, but it just makes it so much easier and it allows you to be consistent. The fifth thing that I did and the final thing was supplementation. And very, very simply, I would make sure that I covered all my micronutrient bases. So I always had a multivitamin to make sure that I was sleeping well, melatonin, 
that I was consistently taking. And I won't give the other things just because it may not apply to you. This is from a unique person to person perspective. And again, for me, the biggest supplement that had an effect on fat loss, right? Because this is going from 30% to 10% was caffeine. Caffeine is an appetite suppressant. And again, the more caffeine you drink, the more your appetite is suppressed. Now, the danger here is that if you drink too much caffeine, you'll struggle to sleep. So I would drink a black coffee. I would start with one. And eventually before midday, I would have two black coffees. And eventually as I got leaner and leaner, it became three black coffees before midday. And sometimes I would make an adjustment. Instead of the black coffee, I would do a pre-workout, which has more caffeine. Right. Now, again, you want to manage your caffeine intake just because caffeine in simple terms will make you eat less. It helped me tremendously to lose weight so much easier without getting into the nitty gritty science. Honestly, creatine is a supplement I should have been taking, right? Just because of its improved benefits. But uh, creatine is something I'd recommend. But I think this is a long winded video and I'll leave the video here. If you guys enjoyed this kind of content where I was just giving you guys a rundown of everything I did, leave the video the gentle thumbs up and let me know in the comments. Do you guys agree with the advice that I'm giving? Do you disagree and what piece for you allowed you to see the biggest transformation from the five things the input the output the risk management uh, obviously the first one was the root and also supplementation what had the biggest impact on you okay cool peace bye